What happened in the very beginning? Before us, before planets or the sun? What happened in that very first nanosecond of time, the instant the universe began, that allowed nothing to become everything? Impossible to know until now. 100 meters below us is the largest science experiment of the world. After decades of preparation, one gigantic particle accelerator is on the verge of changing everything we know about the universe. The greatest scientists in the world are looking to this huge machine to recreate the conditions 13.7 billion years ago in the first moment after the Big Bang. You are about to take a phenomenal exploration to see what may be discovered when a controversial eight billion dollar machine turns on in 2008. Will it reveal extra dimensions of the universe? Will it explain what dark matter is? Will it reveal a kind of universal supersymmetry? Or explain why we even exist at all by unveiling the God particle? Perhaps, but one thing is certain. What we discover at the LHC may be the next Big Bang in physics. This is the next Big Bang. Hi, I'm David Kaplan. I'm a particle physicist. And over the next hour, I'm going to try to explain why we're building the largest science experiment in the history of the planet. It's called the LHC. It's a tunnel 16 and a half miles around and more than a football field underground. It's filled with the most amazing technology in existence. LHC stands for Large Hadron Collider, meaning it's very big and it accelerates and collides hadrons, which are particles. We do this to see deep into the makeup of everything. Trillions of protons will travel in opposite directions around the ring, accelerated to the speed of light, until the beams converge and the particles collide at four separate experiments. And it's here, at these four points, from these powerful particle collisions, that David and other physicists will get a clear picture of the universe's beginning. Imagine this line is the history of the universe. This direction is time. And this direction is temperature, us. Hello, In the beginning, I have the Big Bang. Now we live here because we can't live here earlier in the universe because it's too hot. This is the time that stars formed. If I go before that, I get the time that atoms formed. This is the time when the temperature of the universe is the same as the temperature inside the sun. This is the time where the nucleus of the atom is formed. And back here is the time when everything is one big quark plasma. Before this, it's really hot. Particles are hitting each other really fast, and we have no idea what's happening. The only way to find out what this is, is to build a collider, smash particles together at that temperature, and then see what we see. The LHC's massive underground footprint is located in France and Switzerland. Particle beams will literally come from opposite sides of the border in order to collide. Really, really hard. Particle physics is the study and the search for what things are uh, made of. What are the fundamental particles out of which everything is made? Particles are everywhere. They make up everything. The mountains and the sky, trees, Cows, grass, birds, soil, people, all particles. What makes any one object appear different from any other is simply the way the particles are combined. But if you look deep inside anything, say water, you find molecules made of atoms. Atoms are made of particles like protons and neutrons, which are made of even smaller particles called quarks. In the early universe, there were no atoms. Quarks and other particles were just smashing into each other at super high energies. In order to reproduce that state, the LHC must collide protons at the speed of light. Sometimes we make particles that are much, much more massive than the incoming particles. That's basically because we're transferring the energy of those particles into mass. You can create particles at 
maybe don't occur naturally. At least they don't occur naturally now, but they occurred naturally very early on in the history of the universe. The more powerful the collisions, the closer we get to the temperature of the Big Bang. To comprehend that, you have to understand what temperature means. What is temperature for a, for a physicist? It's just particles moving. So when your stove is hot, it means all the particles in your stove are moving really fast. And if you make it move faster, it gets hotter. Of course, temperature has to do with energy. When the universe was really hot, well, all the particles of the entire universe were moving very fast and smashing into each other. When you hit something with a hammer, part of the energy, part of the kinetic energy of the hammer goes into heating this stuff up. At high temperature, you have soup of primordial soup of particles and they continuously collide. When you collide the particles, you're creating huge temperatures, uh, thousands if not millions of times the temperature of the core of the sun. So, by colliding particles in huge numbers at the speed of light, we reach near Big Bang energies. And enormous energy there is equivalent to this hot temperature at the, at the beginning times of the universe. Now, before particles can collide at the LHC, they have to run through a series of smaller accelerators. So what you do first, you take the proton and you give him a kick. The proton bunches are sent through four separate machines, using more and more powerful magnets to increase their speed. Then, you eject it into the LHC, a big machine, and then accelerate it to its top energy. Accelerating not just one, but trillions of protons to the speed of light. To be precise, they travel at the speed of light minus 10 km per hour. Really fast. It would take you 15 minutes or so to drive the length of the ring, while a proton in the LHC does that trip 11,000 times in a second. Those protons are kept on course by over 9,000 superconducting magnets. 1,232 of them are, are, are called are these big dipole magnets, they're called, and then what make the beam go around in a circle. There are 400 quadrupole magnets, they work like lenses, they focus the beam, and there are all kinds of other smaller magnets that just provide small corrections to the beam orbits. Most of the way around the LHC, the beams are in separate beam pipes traveling parallel, one going this way, one going that way. And right before they get to the experiments, the beam pipes converge into one tube. And then they collide. Per second, there will be 40 million uh, collisions happening. You've got one packet coming this way, one coming that way. They collide 40 million times a second. But there's an awful lot of particles inside these packets, 100 billion in each of them. But when you do the sums, that means that you're getting up to 600 million individual proton-proton collisions a second inside the particle detectors. Thus, replicating the conditions of our universe the instant it began. You have to build a machine that big to get energy enough to mimic what was happening when the universe was a tiny fraction of a second old. Humans have always had the curiosity to ponder the universe and find the makeup of things. Around the 5th century BC, Democritus, a Greek philosopher, uttered an amazing statement for his time. The atom is the smallest indivisible unit. That was a uh, brilliant construct of the mind, you know, that things would be made out of tiny little elements like that. There is nothing but atoms and the void. Can you imagine having a theory, being deeply committed to it, and knowing you'll never be able to prove it in your lifetime. Still, Democritus could imagine the atom. And now, we've already managed to look well within that tiny atom and its particles, allowing science to develop a clear picture of our universe three microseconds after it began. Three microseconds. There are about a hundred thousand microseconds in a single blink of an eye. So since that picture is clear, what did the Big Bang itself actually look like? If I was sitting there watching the Big Bang... Would you have heard the Big Bang? It's very difficult to imagine someone sitting there while space is exploding, because where is the guy sitting? The problem is, the Big Bang is not an explosion in space. It's the explosion of space. You can, you can visualize it sort of maybe as a balloon, if you will. But anyway, let's say you could. So you've got things moving back and forth inside this balloon. It's getting very hot and all of a sudden you take a pin and you pop that helium balloon. 